Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. Today is day 16 of our 30 day SQL challenge where we're going to talk about subqueries in SQL. So let's look at our agenda for today. We are going to define what subqueries are. I'm going to briefly introduce you to a concept called common table expressions known as CTEs, which we will discuss thoroughly in another video. And then we're going to hop into SQLite Studio and do a practice example. So if you're new to the 30 day SQL challenge, welcome. The whole goal is to work on SQL for 30 days, preferably straight or very consistently on learning beginner to intermediate SQL skills that you can apply to projects and thus land an entry level role. I have two QR codes on the screen and both links will be in the description below. One is the topic list where there'll be a list of videos and supplemental resources. Highly recommend you check it out because I put links in there where you can practice concepts further, as well as a Facebook support group. You can join the group and then join the SQL 30 day chat, which should be at the top of the group where you can ask questions about videos, give feedback, help troubleshoot your code, find a study buddy and more. Be sure to utilize Google and other resources to help yourself troubleshoot because that is how you're going to learn. But we are always there in the chat ready to help you troubleshoot as well. So what are subqueries? So subqueries are queries inside another query. So you're going to have, we're working on the select statement, you're going to have another select query already nested inside of another select statement. And I'll show you exactly what that is. And it's used when you want to do things that require multiple steps in a single query. Now, if you learn common table expressions, which I'm going to highlight towards the end of the video, you don't have to worry about subqueries. Subqueries can be very difficult for people to grasp. So I highly recommend that you practice it. But if you know common table expressions, you don't have to worry about subqueries mostly. So let's look at an example. So here is a subquery that exists in the select clause. And here is a question that you were given. You want to return album titles in the track count for the first 10 records in the albums table. Use a subquery in the select clause. So that was my little hint here because album titles come from the album table and track information comes from the tracks table, I have to use either a join or a subquery in this case to solve this problem. And since we're talking about subqueries, we're gonna use a subquery. So at times I like to use the create the outer query first. So I know that I want to select the title, album title, from albums, and I know I wanna limit 10. Those are my first 10 records. Now inside the select clause, I also need a count of tracks for every item. So I'm selecting a count of the track ID from tracks, where the album ID in the tracks table is equal to the album ID in the albums table. And I'm storing that as track count. And this will give me exactly what I need. So this is a subquery. In parentheses, we put that second query here. And it's just a second query inside of an outer query. You can have subqueries in the select clause, the where clause, the from clause, et cetera. Most of the time you'll see it in select from and where. Okay, so I needed information from two separate tables. I didn't wanna do a join in this case. I ended up, selecting what I needed from the first table and selecting what I needed from the second table and using this filtering syntax where I match the album ID from tracks from the albums.album ID from the albums table. Notice that I can do this match here because the from clause is executed first. Even though we type it second, it's executed first. So it is going to recognize that I have already read from the albums table. So I can do this type of filtering here and then store that as the alias track count. So let's look at a question of an example of a subquery in the where clause. So say for instance, you wanna return customer ID and full name 
for all customers who have made more than five invoices. You're gonna use a subquery here in the where clause. So I wanna return customer ID and full name. Most of the time I'm dealing with customers, it is going to be from the customer table. I also need to know how many invoices the customers have made. So that is gonna come from the invoice table. So here again, we have information that we need from two tables and I wanna use a subquery to solve this. So in this case, I'm taking the customer ID and the full name. So I'm just creating a field here, first name, this double pipe, which is next to on top of the backslash on your keyboard is what we call concatenation. So we're just adding the first name plus a space plus the last name as customer name. And I'm gonna get that from the customer table. And I only want to return customer IDs that's in this subquery here, where I'm selecting the customer ID from invoices, grouping by the customer ID, that having a count of greater than five for invoices. Because keep in mind that the having clause is in relation to the group by clause. So the having only applies to customer ID. So only return customer IDs having more than five invoices. And this is going to give me my expected result. So have this subquery in your mind because I'm going to compare this what you see on the screen to the next slide so this is an introduction to common table expressions known as ctes so instead of using a subquery you can create what we call a temporary table so for those who don't like to nest things inside of each other which that's me i like to look at things linear i don't like a lot of nested loops or nested information i can use a common table expression to get the same answer so in this case, I'm creating a temporary table called customer invoice count, and it has this syntax with name of new table as, and I put my query in parentheses, select the customer ID, select the count invoice ID as invoice count from invoices, group by customer ID, having a count greater than five. And so if you look at this query and we back up, we see that this is the same subquery that we have here, okay? So in this case, all right, I now can do a, my second query, which is select customer ID, the first name from customers, join it with the temporary table that I just created on customer ID. So in this case, I can pull out that second subquery into a temporary table, then create another query where I'm joining this temporary table to the table customers on customer ID. Now, this is called common table expressions. We're definitely going to practice this in a future video, but you don't really need to know subqueries like that if you know common table expressions. Now, people still use subqueries you should be able to read a subquery and kind of know what the expected output is especially if you're using someone else's code but if you know that you are going to be using a query over and over and over again it's great to create these temporary tables at the top of your code so then you can use these temporary tables over and over and over again Okay, so what practice question are we doing today? So we want to return customer ID and full name for all customers where the sum of their total invoices is greater than the average total invoices for all customers. Pretty much, I want to do two things. I want to figure out the average of the total column in the invoices table. So I want to use that AVG function. Once I get that average, I then want to return all customers where their total number of invoices were greater than the average because these are my high shoppers, my real, real loyal customers that I may want to analyze. Okay, so ask yourself, what columns do you want to return? This is going to be very similar to our previous example. We need customer ID and full name. So we want to return customer ID and full name. 
What two tables do you need? I need information from customers and invoices. And I give you a hint here that you need two subqueries in the where clause. You need one subquery that is going to get you out the sum of total for every customer ID. And you're going to need a second subquery that is going to give you the average of a single column across an entire table. So think about that practice question. If you want to practice it on your own, feel free to pause the video. I'm going to hop into SQLite Studio and we're going to practice this, okay? And let me just go ahead and make some empty space. Cool beans. I'm going to go to view and have my databases pop back up. Collapse all my tables. And here I'm going to expand the customers table and I am going to expand the invoices table and look at both of these columns. Okay, so let's go ahead and let me just write as a comment what we want to do. We want to return customer ID and name for all customers whose total invoice amount is greater than, I'm just gonna put GT, um, then the average invoice amount for all customers or all invoices that we have in the table. Okay, so let's do the easy part. Let's select what we need. So we want to return customer ID and I'm gonna just expand this a little bit. And we also want to return their full name. So I'm going to do select and I'm going to return customer ID, comma. And then I'm also going to do that concatenation, right? So I'm gonna do the first name, pipe, pipe. This means add an empty space, pipe, pipe, last name as full name. And I'm just gonna call this full name. Okay. And I know that I want to select this from the customers table because that's where that information is at. And now I want to do a where. And I only want to return customer IDs that is has a total greater than than average. So I'm going to say where customer ID in that keyword in and so now i can do my subquery and we know subqueries start with that parentheses okay so in this case i want to select the customer id again from this invoices table okay and i want to group by customer id having a sum of the total. So I want the sum of their total to be greater than selecting, okay? So let's, let's look at that. So we want their sum of the total to be greater than the average of the entire invoices table. So now I'm going to select the average of that total column from invoices. Okay. So here I selected what I wanted from the customer table. I only want the customer ID if it is in these subqueries here where I'm selecting the customer ID from invoices I then have to group by the customer ID so I can sum up the total for every customer. And I want the sum of the total to be greater than me selecting the average total from invoices. And this is how I solve that question. So now I can run this and I get a list out of people and it's given me 59 people that are greater than the average from invoices. Okay. All right, 
Now, could I have done this in a common table expression? Yes, I can. So let's just do that for fun. So let's do same query using CTE. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to do two common table expressions. I'm going to do one for the average and one for the sum because that is what I need. Every common table expression is one query. So let's go ahead and let's do the sum first since that's what we use first. So it's gonna be the keyword width, the name of the table. So I'm just gonna call this customer totals, keyword as parentheses. And now my query goes here where I want to, and let me indent it for readability, select the customer ID, the sum of the total and i'm just going to put the sum of total as total spent as an alias from invoices group by customer id all right so this should be the end of this first subquery that i have here Select customer ID, instead of doing the sum in the having clause, I'm doing it in the actual select clause. Sum up the total from invoices and group by customer ID, okay? So if I were to take this out on its own, so let's just copy and paste this down here. This is how I like to troubleshoot code. If I were to take this out on its own, what does it give me? It gives me the customer ID and the total amount that they spent. Awesome, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, now I can put a comma after this and do another common table expression. So I'm gonna create another table and I'm gonna call this one average invoice total as, I don't need another with, but I need another as in this case. And I'm going to just get the average of the total Let's go ahead and alias this from invoices. Okay. So now this should give me the average. So this should give me a single number. So once again, I'm gonna copy this and paste it just to see what the result is. I love doing this. And here is the average is 5.65, okay? So not really a high average there. Okay, cool. So now I can do that select clause. I have my two subqueries here written out as tables. One of the subqueries is called customer totals. The other subquery is average invoice total. And this would be beneficial if I need to use these tables multiple times. So in this case, let's go ahead and select our customer ID in full name. So we're going to let, select c.customerid. I'm putting the C because I know I'm gonna alias it. And let's go ahead and do c.firstname. Let's create that field again with that space, c.lastname as full name from the customers table and that's going to be c so now we can join so let's go ahead and join that customers table with customers total our first query i'm going to do that ct and we're going to put on c dot customer id equals ct.customerid, okay? So what this is doing is saying, hey, now we can actually do what we want in one query because we have all of our temporary tables. From customers, give me their ID and first name. I want to join the customers table, enter join, okay, on the customer totals, which customer totals was the sum for all customers, okay? And that's what I want to get. So when we do this, before we add anything else, um, customer totals, I forgot to run this. So it's looking at me. Oh, there we go. 
customer totals. Let's make sure I spelt it correctly. Customer totals, customer totals. Yep, I put an S right here. I'm signed for that. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and do this. In here, this is what I get, okay? Which is just couple with customer ID and their full name joined together, okay? So now let's go ahead and add a where clause here where I can say where CT, which is customer totals, total spent is greater than, okay? And then here we could do our select average total since that was one number from our temporary table above, average invoice total. So now I'm going to select all the customers where their sum is greater than the average total. Okay. And I still get those same 59 records below. So not completely eliminating a subquery here, but definitely another way you can do it with common table expressions if you would like, especially if you want to use that average for other data analysis. Okay. All right, so in essence, that is subqueries. Please, please, please practice your subqueries. Go back through this video. I did not understand subqueries the first time. I had to practice over and over again. So please like this video. This helps me make more videos, helps me make more free content. I'm gonna put my Etsy shop in the des description below as well as buy me a coffee. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you for day 17. Bye-bye.